This letter that I'm about to share with you was written nine days into my treatment center stay. Uh, I was deeply in my detox, couldn't really produce a solid thought or articulate it in a sensible fashion. But I was willing to do whatever it took to feel a little better, which meant anything besides sitting in my room going crazy with my thoughts. And they had a group one day and, and they, they gave us each a pen and a piece of paper and, and said, we want you to write a letter or a poem to somebody that you, you really love and you hold in, in high regards. And it was a no-brainer to me that that letter would be written to my mother because she's been the MVP in my story throughout my whole life. So without further ado, let me share with you this letter. And if it comes across a little jumpy or shaky, keep in mind I had nine days sober. I remember sitting in the room with a towel wrapped around me, shaking while I was writing it. And, and you'll see in this letter I wrote the date, the time, and uh, of when it took place because I knew I knew things were gonna be different this time. I really believed in, in my heart of hearts that I was gonna stay sober and that this letter would, would be a very powerful statement later on down the road. And here we are, seven years later, reading that letter. Dear Mom, you brought me into this world hoping and dreaming I would become the man you'd love to see. See me filled with love in my heart. I know it's unfortunate your husband, my dad, tore us apart. Although it may seem too late, Mom, I promise it's not. Kind of like a Picasso piece, you produced a work of art. When I think of a perfect specimen, it's you and only you that dances through my mind. You're the first thing I think of when my eyes open and the last thing before they close. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> then she answers. She's impossible. Are you serious? Now you're gonna walk right through where I'm filming? My brother's calling. Stop talking like Don't that. come in here and start your shit, Shuffler. Stop talking like that. Why are you causing problems Stop in a new house? You causing problems in a new house. No, no, no. Yeah, you are. You're disturbing my shoot. Okay. You're, what don't you understand about you have to be quiet while I'm filming? I'll walk the ram here, put my coffee in the bike, minding my own business. Making tons of noise. You're the one making the noise. I'm being very quiet. <laughs> she turns the fucking... She turns the light off in there because she's worried about conserving energy. I think you just, you play dumb. And stop turning the lights off. We don't need lights. Anymore. Don't turn. Stop following me. Can't you wait to get my makeup going? We're gonna put it on now. Take 12. As long as our love shines, there's nothing in this world we can't obtain. I love you, mom, and it's you and only you that fills my heart with heat so hot that the sun can't even beat. I love you, Mom. Your son, Brandon. I forget how powerful this is. You know, I've, I've framed it. It sits in my mother's house in her living room, and, and I walk past it a lot. I walk past it all the time, and, and I, I rarely, rarely even look at it. I see it out of the corner of my eye, and I don't even, it doesn't even gauge my attention. But sitting here holding this, looking at that flower that I picked from the, from the garden that day and the ink on the paper when I was still shaking, trying to, to pray that I could sleep that night. You know, just the, the looking back the simplicity in life at that time but at that time, thinking that like nothing could be worse. The juxtaposition with seven years of sobriety, which is a very short period of time, is mind blowing.